Um, another thing that we might uh, want to do, um, another example he gives, in fact, is time stamping, uh, the t time stamping entries into uh, a spreadsheet. So to give a good, an example, here I'm going to go to sheet three, go to 200 percent. So let's say here is going to be the data in column A, and here is going to be the timestamp in column B. Uh, and what we want to do is whenever we put some value in column A, uh, we want it to automatically put the timestamp, what date and time uh, the data was ent entered. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write a formula that's going to look uh, to see whether uh, the value in A, in column A, is blank. Right, so for B1, B2, we're going to see if the, the data in A2 is blank or if it actually uh, has something. If it is blank, then we shouldn't put a timestamp here. Otherwise, we should have a timestamp here. However, we also only want to put this timestamp one time. We only want to put the timestamp if uh, we haven't already calculated the timestamp. So besides looking to see if the data in column A is blank, we also want to see if the text in column B is blank. If it's blank, we want to calculate this timestamp. Uh, if it's not blank, we want to leave it with its old value. So the way that we do this is we have the following formula. I'll say as follows. Equal if and what am I going to look for? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to ask, is blank of A2? Right? In other words, has data been entered in column 2? If it, has, if it is in fact blank, then comma, the, the value should be quotation mark, quotation mark. Basically, it should be blank. So that's the value if, if, if blank is true. Now, comma, then we have the value if it's false. And here, we're going to feed another if into this if. So instead of just having some kind of value that's always going to be there, we're going to put an if. This if is going to be whether the data in column B, whether the text in column B is empty or not. So we'll say if, open parentheses, B2, in other words, now I'm talking about myself, if myself, if I am equal to, quote, quote, uh, this uh, two double quotes, if, if right now I am blank, um, if I have no text in there, right, I have the empty string there, um, so if that's true, then I'm going to uh, evaluate to now. Now is a function that's going to give the present date and time. Otherwise, I'm going to have a comma, the value is going to be B2. B2, meaning the exactly this old value, this old text, that old timestamp that was in B2. I put this end parentheses uh, to end this internal if. I'll put another parentheses to end the uh, outside if, and I press enter. And right now it's blank. I'm going to take this uh, formula, and I'm going to drag it down to a whole bunch of other entries, let's say uh, up to B22. And now I go back up here. And let's say I'll put some data in A1. I'll put a 45, and I press Enter. And it didn't calculate it for me automatically. I would have to press F9 here to manually calculate it. And it puts this timestamp here. Um, this is showing this timestamp in um, as a floating point number. There's an integer component beforehand, which is the days and uh, floating point portion, which is the portion of the day, which is uh, hours and minutes. All of this really should be um, formatted as date. So we'll, instead of the category being general, I'm going to format this as date, and I'll say OK. Um, actually, that only gave the date. I would like to format this as the um, date and time. So let's see under, we have date and time someplace. Um, You want to format it as a long date. 
basically. So, um, here's a whole bunch of custom formats, but here we have um, we have all these custom formats. I'll just choose one which has month, date, year, 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 hour, minute, minute. So I'll say OK. Uh, I need more space for this column. Here we got 9 26 2007. That's 1240. Uh, now I really don't like this uh, having to recalculate by hand by pressing F9. So I'm just going to go back to tools and options and from now on I'm going to change the calculation from manual to automatic. And we'll say OK. So now every single time I type in some kind of uh, data is going to be calculated. If you look at the bottom of my screen here, it's now no longer 1240, it's 1241. So if I now type um, uh, 3 in here, so it's or it just turned to 1242. See, the, uh, the timestamp is 926-2007 as 1242. Did it recalculate this first portion? No, it did not because it um, already had some kind of value in it. And we explicitly said, if I am blank, right, if I'm equal to quote, quote, in other words, if I have no text inside of me, only then do I calculate to now. Otherwise, um, if I already have text, leave me alone. So uh, I'm going to be equal to myself. Okay, and so you can continue to do this, um, and you'll have a timestamp for all of your data without having to look it up by hand. Um, okay, so that's um, another example. Um, let's uh, add another worksheet. We'll insert a worksheet. So we'll go now, we're in sheet 4. And um, another nice example is calculating an all-time high value. Um, and the example he actually gives in the book, it's an interesting example. Let's say you have sales for specific months. Um, so here is sales for this month. And then we're going to have a list of salespeople followed by um, how much they brought in in, in, uh, in sales. Or, uh, yeah, let's, let's say, uh, or how many units they sold, it doesn't matter. Uh, some kind of value like that. So let's say here we have Bill, and we have Jill, and we have Wendy, and we have Bob, and we have Jake. A whole bunch of different salespeople. And let's say Bill brought in 50,000 this month in sales. Jill brought in uh, 60,000 in sales this month. Wendy brought in $42,541 in sales this month. I'm just making up these numbers. You could type in whatever values you want. 43,122 and Jake brought in um, 12,000 in sales. So here are uh, a bunch of salespeople and the amount they brought in. And we would like to know the maximum um, of what they brought in. Uh, so it would be nice to know uh, the maximum that uh, each of them brought in for this month, but it would also be nice to compare with their all-time high, how much they made for all months. So let's say every single month, we don't really care about the old figures so much. This is uh, We could save that in some other spreadsheet. But here, it's just the sales for the present month. And you want to know, first of all, who uh, the, the uh, all-time, uh, the maximum of all of these numbers, but also compare it with the old value. So let's say um, at some point, um, let's say last month, somebody had sold uh, 10,000. And that was already calculated in here as 10,000 as being uh, the all-time high. Or it could be that the all-time high was 100,000. Right, so we would like to basically put some kind of value here in, in uh, D1 that represents the all-time high. So you could look every single month, you could recalculate this value, see if it needs to be changed, figure out the maximum, compare it by hand, and possibly replace this value. Um, but it would be nicer if you could recalculate the value um, as well as, at the same time, um, one of the, the values that you're looking at is the value that's presently in this cell. So um, I could say, for example, um, 
well, the formula right here is equals max of, and then we have a bunch of numbers, uh, and each of these uh, things that we're trying to find the max of, we could give a range or we could give a specific cell. So let's just take uh, the maximum of B3 through B7. Comma, we would also like to give in uh, D1. Take the max, uh, when figuring out the maximum of them, B3 to B7 as well as D1. Now this is of course a circular reference, but that's fine. I'm going to put the click on OK. And I get 60,000, which is the maximum of all of these values. See, 50,000, 60,000, 42,000, 43,000, 12,000. So Jill, who made 60,000, that's her all-time high. Now let's say I'm now changing the figures for the next month. And so now let's say it's September. So uh, in October, uh, we ha now have new figures. So Bill, instead of making 50,000, he, he only brought in 10,000. And uh, Jill brought in 12,000. And Wendy brought in 20,000. And Bob brought in 30,000. And Jake brought in, once again, 12,000. So I put in the new values in here. But notice that even though none of these values are 60,000, we still have, for the all-time high, 60,000. Because one of the values it's considering when calculating its new uh, maximum is the old value that was in D1, which is a 60,000. Of course, if some number was entered that was a higher number, so... Um, we, let's say Bill may, brought in 100,000. So that's going to automatically change. D1 is now going to have 100,000. So it's kind of like uh, if you're playing a computer game and you get, uh, uh, you could get on the high score list and they often show uh, the highest score ever. So that this is a way of accomplishing it. Once again, that formula that we had was the maximum of all these values that we want to find the maximum of, plus uh, so we have a comma, the cell itself where we're storing that value. So um, that's a, another example of how you could use circular references to your advantage.